Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, the isometric system. Why do they call it the isometric system? Well, basically because everything in terms of its dimensions are the same. A parallel word for this would be the cubic system. All right. Now, we start off by learning the basics of the cubic system. Initially, I would like to let you know that we have three axes, which can be drawn something like this. You can designate this to be the A axis. That's the B axis. And that's the C axis. The beauty about these axes is that, number one, the length of the crystal along each of these axes is exactly the same. The next most interesting thing that we will notice is that the angle between the A and B axis okay, is 90 degrees to each other. Likewise, the angle between the C and the B is also 90 degrees to each other. And as you guessed, the angle between the A and the C axis is also 90 degrees. Now that's the most important thing that you got to know about the cubic or isometric system. Having learned this, let us now try to apply this in the real sense. Okay, now if I were to apply that knowledge I just learned on the picture to your right, which is the actual cube that you can see here. Now you realize that all dimensions here are exactly the same. This is side is equal to this side and that is also equal to that side. Of course, this photograph has been taken at an angle so you get to see all the sides. If I were to draw the C-axis in this picture, first, this would be the C-axis, that would be the B, and that will be the A. So the C-axis will start somewhere here and go all the way on the inside and appear at the bottom of this cube. Now, the B axis will start from the center of the cube, just like here. Okay. The center of the cube and it will come out here. Starting from the other side and up to here, crisscrossing down with the C. And the A axis would be coming out from the center and going through the crystal and coming out of the other side. So this is just half the crystallographic axis. You can have the other half at the back, like this, and like this. <clears throat> so if we were to draw the crystal as a whole, you're going to have something like that. Okay. And the crystallographic axis is contained somewhat on the interior part or internal part coming out here in the middle, coming out here in the middle, and coming out here in the middle of the face. Okay, I hope you have a good idea of where the crystallographic axis is, which is going on the inside of the block. Okay, I cannot draw it through because the block is solid. It's something like that. Now, another characteristic that we would like to study about the cubic system is the plane of symmetry. Now, I've defined this in the another video, but it doesn't matter. So, let's just consider this to be a typical plane, a two-dimensional plane. It means that anything on this side is mirrored on that side. If I have a plane like this, Anything above the plane is mirrored directly below. So now if I were to consider a um, cubic system, like what I have here, let me just draw this out. 
it is not very difficult to envisage planes of symmetry. Okay? So if I were to take a piece of plane and cut this cube right in the middle, like this, Okay, right in the middle. So I have here a plane of symmetry where everything on this side of the symmetry is mirrored to the other side. So if I were to just draw this line of symmetry here, it's going to be something like that. And going down all the way. So everything here is mirrored there. What the same. And this line is exactly the middle of this face. Okay. I can have another line of symmetry drawn, maybe uh, if I change the color of my pen, something like this. That is cutting this length here by half. Okay, this is equal to that. And I can have one more plane of symmetry. I change the color of my pen. If you look down there, I'm drawing a yellow line there, okay, which cuts this line exactly in half. So quite easily, I can have three planes of symmetry very, very easily running through the system. Okay, this will go all the way there. And the blue, of course will come all the way down. Oops, sorry. Let's get this thing drawn correctly. Okay, there you go. So that will be a plane of symmetry for the blue. This will be a plane of symmetry for the yellow. And this will be the plane of symmetry for the red. So easily for a cube, for a cubic system, or an isometric system, you have three basic planes of symmetry. You may ask me, I mean, is that all we have here? I mean, can't we just cut this like that? Yeah, sure, you could do that. I mean, that's a plane by itself. Okay. So everything on this side is mirrored onto that side. And you can do that as well from there to there, from that corner or diagonal to this diagonal. So that is another topic because uh, diagonal symmetry is something not the same as what I'm talking about now. So then we take this picture now. Let's do diagonal symmetry planes. Okay. So I cut a line across like this and everything on this side is going to be mirrored onto this side. This also means that the cube will have to turn 180 degrees easily okay, before I can get to see this face here in this position. But that's not going to be 90 degree turn, it's going to be 180 degree turn. Okay. Right, similarly, I can have another diagonal drawn from that end to this end and cut it off down here. In which case, everything on this side of the diagonal now is going to mirror or be mirrored on that side. Again, the same 180 degrees rule applies. I can do other kinds of symmetry, diagonal symmetries, these are just two on this face, but we can take another two on this face and so on and so forth. So I leave it to you now to see exactly how many diagonal symmetry planes you can have for a cubic system. Right, in this slide, we're going to be looking at uh, the axis of symmetry. So we have 
the basic A, B, and C axis. And in this case, the axis of symmetry is going to be such that these are the crystallographic axis. But what we want is we want to draw a axis and if you have such an axis if you rotate the cube by 90 degrees or whatever you're going to end up seeing the same face. So one of course will be right through here itself. If you send a line right through and this is a cube let me just draw a cube here for you. If I take the center of this and draw a line right through to come out there, every time I rotate the cube by 90 degrees, I'm going to see exactly the same square face. I can get the same if I were to get a line from there to there. Or a line from here to here. Every time I rotate the cube and every 90 degrees, I'm going to be seeing the same face. But question is, can I send a line from there to emerge here, okay, or a line from there or an axis from there to emerge there, or one from there to emerge there, or even one from here to emerge here, okay, and maybe I change the color, it'll be easier for you to see. I send one from here, oh that's very bad, the yellow. Okay. Let me send one from here to emerge there, okay, and so on and so forth. Will I indeed have okay, a symmetry along that axis? That's an open question for you to answer. I'd like you to try it out and check it out and see if you have an axis of symmetry along Next we have what is known as a center of symmetry. So if I were to bring back a cube again, like what I see in the picture there, okay, let's say this is your cube. <clears throat> the center of symmetry is quite simple. All I got to do is I have to send an x axis from here to emerge from there, an axis from there to emerge there, okay, and maybe an axis from here to emerge there. I'll change the color of the pen here so that you guys can see what's happening. So the first axis goes something like that, second comes something like that, third goes something like that. Or you can have an axis from here to here, there to there, it doesn't matter. But then at the point where they intersect, right in the middle of the cube, <coughs> that is your center of symmetry, right in the middle of the cube. So in this case, I send an axis from there to emerge there, one from there to emerge down here, okay, and one from here, let's say, to emerge out there. And where they meet somewhere in the middle of the cube, that will be your center of symmetry. Okay? All right. Well, that sort of brings us to the end of this video on the isometric system. I sure hope that you have enjoyed learning the fundamentals of the isometric system as much as I have enjoyed uh, teaching it to you. Be on the lookout for more videos as we roll along. Take care.